So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to paint a simple watercolor scene with a friendly ghost. As usual, you can follow this with any brushes you're comfortable with, but I'll list everything I'm using in the description. So to start painting, I'm going to grab the abstract round brush and a pretty dark purple tone, and I'm going to create an interesting oval wash like this. Now in this video, I'm not going to use a sketch or a color palette, but I will put those in the pinned comment below just in case you want to use them. After that, I'm going to select a slightly darker version of our purple, and I'm going to make the top half of this a little bit darker. And after that, I'm going to grab the water blender and slightly smooth the transition, and also I'll smooth out some of the edges as well. Next, I want to add some trees here. So I'm going to make a layer above my background. I'm still going to use the abstract round for this, but I'm just going to use a couple of different shades of this lighter, kind of same purple tone smaller brush size and I'm gonna make a bunch of tree shapes like this and depending on the shade of purple that I kind of change it to they might be more or less visible but that's totally okay because I want a lot of variety here and that looks pretty good I'm gonna grab the eraser brush which is set to the fine liner pen and I'm gonna use that to clean up the edges then I'll grab the water blender again and I'll smooth out the bottoms of the trees Next, I want to add some bushes down here at the bottom. So I'll make another new layer. I'm going to use a pretty light purple tone. Same abstract round I used before. And I'm just going to make some shapes like this. I think I want uh, them to be a little bit more visible, so I'll lighten the color. There we go. Then I'm going to change to the water blender. And I'm going to use it to kind of fade off the bottom. And this part is optional, but I want to draw some mushrooms and leaves down here. So to do that, I'm going to switch to the fine liner pen. I'm going to keep the same light purple tone. And I'll just draw some simple shapes like this. And once the background is done, I'm going to merge all the layers for it together onto one. And I'm going to show you a few tricks to make this look a little bit more interesting. The first thing I want to do is add a kind of vignette to this. So for that, I'm gonna grab the freehand selection tool and I'm gonna select all the way around, but I'm not gonna reconnect it. I'm gonna kind of circle back. And this is how I make a sort of donut shaped selection. I'm gonna feather it out, hue, saturation, and brightness. I'm gonna saturate it quite a bit and also darken it. Basically, I want it to have a kind of dark fade towards the edges. The next thing I wanna do is add a scratchy border to this. So I'll make a new layer, but I'm gonna make sure it's below this uh, background here. For the brush, I'm gonna use a charcoal brush. I think I'll use the 6B compressed. And I wanna make sure that I grab a pretty dark purple tone from the edge here. We can test that out. I think that looks pretty good. And I'm gonna use this at a kind of a medium size and just go along the edge like this. And I think that looks pretty nice. So I'm gonna merge it together with the background so everything's on one layer. The next thing I wanna do is give this background a sort of wet on wet watercolor effect. And to do that, I'm gonna grab the selection tool again, set to freehand, and I'm gonna make a pretty random selection shape like this. I'll reconnect it. I'm gonna feather it out quite a bit. Then I'll go to my adjustments, Gaussian blur. And if I kind of drag on the screen here, I can control the level of the blur. It's just blurring the area we selected. And this kind of makes it look like the colors are kind of randomly blending together. I think I'll set it around 15%. And finally, the last trick I wanna show you for this background is adding a color variation effect. So again, I'll use the freehand selection tool. I'll make another kind of wild selection. I'll reconnect it, feather it out quite a bit. This time, I'm gonna to go to hue, saturation, and brightness. And I'm just gonna play with the hue. And once again, it only shifts it in the areas we selected. And I'm gonna nudge it just a little bit towards this kind of bluish green tone because it looks a little bit more interesting. And now that the background is finished, we can move on and start working on the ghost. So I'm gonna make him on a new blank layer above the background. For the color, I'm gonna use a very, very light yellow tone. And for the brush, I'm gonna use the abstract round. And I'm just gonna rough out a very simple ghost shape I can refine this later on, so I'm not trying to get it perfect the first try. After that, I'm gonna grab the water blender brush, 
And I'm gonna use this to smooth out uh, some of these overlapping strokes, but I do like the look of it, so I'm gonna leave some of them behind. Then I'm gonna use this at a slightly larger size and use this to kind of fade out the bottom so it looks like it's kind of rising mist or something. After that, you can grab the eraser brush and use it to refine some of these edges just in case it turned out a little bit lumpy. I think that arm looks fine, but this one needs a little bit of smoothing. Another thing you can do to give this more character is go ahead and grab the warp tool and you can kind of bend the ghost and give him a kind of more interesting posture. This is definitely optional, but I highly recommend giving it a try. This ghost did turn out a little bit small, so I'm gonna scale him up a little bit. Then I'm gonna move on and start adding the glowy effect. And for that, I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm gonna drag it below the ghost. I'm gonna continue with my warm white tone, but I'm gonna switch my brush to a default brush in the drawing tab called Little Pine. And I'm gonna use this at a kind of a small size and I'm just gonna kind of sketch and sort of go around the perimeter of the ghost and it gives it this kind of glowing radiating effect. And in this case, it looks a little bit too strong. So I'm gonna adjust the layer opacity to lighten it. There we go. And once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna merge it together with the main body of the ghost. And at this point, we can finally move on and do the face. So I'm gonna make a new layer for that. And I'm gonna do all of these facial features with the little pine brush. I think the scratchy effect that it has looks really nice for a ghost. And I think this looks pretty good. There's one more sort of glowing effect that I wanna show you. It's sort of an advanced technique, but I think it's worth doing because it adds a lot to this illustration. So to do this effect, I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm gonna place it all the way below the ghost, but still above the background. For the color, I'm gonna change it back to a similar warm white we painted the ghost in. And for the brush, I recommend using the blotchy wash brush for this. And I'll use it at a pretty big size. And I'm just gonna paint this all the way around the ghost. After that, I'm gonna change the transparency mode of this layer to overlay. I think I might lighten the transparency just a little bit, but I think that looks pretty good. Now this effect here is kind of simulating the radiance of the ghost, kind of reflecting off the trees in the background. But if you look where there's kind of gaps in the trees, I wanna make sure that is uh, kind of staying as dark as possible. So I'm gonna make sure our kind of glowy effect layer is selected. And I'm gonna use the eraser brush at a small size. And I'm just gonna erase this glowy effect from the gaps in the trees. I also wanna have this same effect kind of happening on things in the foreground. So we're still on that same glowy layer, same color. I'm gonna use the same blotchy wash brush, but at a smaller size. And I'm just gonna manually kind of go in there and paint a sort of glowy reflection on anything that I think uh, might be catching it. And this is definitely a very subtle effect, but it adds a lot of depth and I think it's worth doing. Now at this point, the illustration could be done but I wanna play with the layout and see if I can create something more interesting. And if you wanna do that, it's important to make sure that the ghost is sort of compressed onto one layer. So I'm gonna merge the face together with the ghost. And then the glowy effect is actually part of the background. So I'm gonna merge that with the background. The point here is that we just end up with two different layers, one for the ghost and one for the background. And this will let us manage uh, each of them separately. And for example, I'm gonna select the background and I'm gonna use the arrow tool set to distort. And I'm gonna see if I can create a kind of an interesting shape here. I think that looks pretty interesting. It's not something I'd come up on my own and that's why I like playing with the distort this way. I'm also gonna do the same thing with the ghost as well and see if I can make his posture more interesting. And there we go. This little illustration is all done. If you think I've earned it, please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see a new Procreate tutorial like this posted every Thursday.